Rogue has him figured out, and he should realize that now and just start playing safe, go for that better, uh, go get into his comfortable style of playing a better macro game and a better mind game against Rogue. Yeah. I think it's time for a safe pool. Soki probably feels like he's a better player in the late game anyway, so even if suddenly Rogue changes it up, he's gonna have that eco to fall back on. He's gonna have that map awareness that he's got. He's a great ZBZ player like we were talking about before. So even if he goes pool first, and his opponent goes hatch first, he's a little bit eco behind, he can definitely catch up. He's Soki. He is Soki. That is one thing going for him, Wolf. Absolutely. All right, guys, it's time for game number three. Could be the final game in this series to see if Rogue can close it out or if Sulky is going to bring us to a game number four here at the SSL. Bottom center. Top right. In the red. <laughs> Virginia Green Wings, it's Rogue. Up two games in the series, double nine pool victory against Super Eco Sulky. Just flying to the six o'clock in blue. Let's keep a close eye, Moonglade, on that production tab. Let's keep a very close eye, a keen eye indeed, Wolf. It would be quite amazing if we actually saw Rogue go for it a third time in a row. I, can't, I, I must say Okay, he's not. Overlord, but Sulky. <laughs> okay, he also makes an Overlord. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice try there. But uh, yeah, it looks like it will be a straight up game. We'll have to wait and see if Sulky's gonna go for a hatch first for a third time in a row. I, I truly hope not. I don't think he will either. I don't think he will either. No one wants to go down for a, go down to a, a nine pool bane three games in a row to have like the fastest best of five in the history of StarCraft 2. <laughs> yeah, one of our fastest men for sure. Well, let's see exactly how Rogue wants to play this because he's obviously changing his build up already. And I think we're going to see a hatch first out of him. It's another smart move. If you do the build three times in a row, uh, it's a little bit more predictable, but you might keep your opponent afraid. He might be scared you're going to do it three times in a row. Then you take the ultimate eco greed. You do. And you yourself do the hatch first into the gas. Yeah. Well, and I think it most likely will be that, considering the map. And look at that. Sulky with a safe pool this yeah, time. Yeah. No surprise there. He's not going to go 3-0 to that. No way, no how. That would just be uh, just be horrible for his uh, confidence going into the future. And it is going to be that 15 hatch, and it's going to be that 16 gas. So Rogue taking full advantage of the... Uh, the state in which uh, Sulky's mind is at, obviously, going to be playing safe this game. And from there, he's going to have like a nice advantage. He's going to get speed out a lot faster than Sulky. And he's going to take map control. And from there, we have to wait and see if he's going to go straight into muter. He's going to go for a faster third base into Roach. There's a lot of ways you can do it when you have the, uh, the scouting advantage, you have the gas advantage, and speed links earlier. Yeah. Such a greedy pool here by Rogue, but I love it. I love how he just puts on the pressure, gets two early wins. And now we could just start putting uh, that eco pressure, I guess you could call it, on Solgi to saying, all right, now I'm going to play greedy. And you have to yeah. completely switch things up. Well, he can play greedy, and it, then he can uh, start applying pressure like in the early game as well, because he's going to have speed a lot early. So he can get speedlings out in the map. He can create a lot of pressure, take an easier third base greedy, even more eco pressure in the mid game. And from there, it's going to be entirely up to Solgi to, to find his way out and figure out what he's going to do to, to kind of counteract this. Yeah. It's actually so funny how ZBZ works with that gas timing because if you get it early, uh, it, it can be greedy, but it can also be aggressive. You know, like in this case, we're taking a gas greedy like Rogue has is something that puts him into the lead with something that he can use to attack. So Sulky kind of loses in both ways. His eco is late because his hatch is late, his gas is late, and then he can't get that speed up, which means that Rogue can run circles around him quite literally. And one of the big things to note as well that we didn't note earlier on is that, that the, the overlord went straight to Sulky. The first overlord from Rogue scattered everything. And so he, he got to see uh, a 15 pool timing with the gas, uh, without having to make Zerg to suicide them in anytime this is, soon. This is uh, Sulky's first look at Rogue's base. Yeah. First time he's going to see it. Now he knows, okay, you pull out of gas, you got speed early. He's going to have to play accordingly. Of course, his speed is started back at home as well. It's not a huge deficit, but it's important. And he starts a bailing nest for safety, I take it. Well, he can be aggressive with this too. Now that he saw that there was no gas mining from. Uh, from Rogue's main base, he can be like, okay, your bailing nest is going to be very, very late, if not at all. From here, I can do uh, Ling Bane timing if I want to. We have to wait and see how many Zergs we do, we do see come out of uh, Sulky. We are seeing six so far. Uh, eight now, so we can be adding more. He's going to scout again, maybe looking for a spine crawler. Yeah, see if there's a spine crawler. Maybe the bailing nest is put in an obvious location. Ooh, that's oh, that's no. very painful for any kind of timing. We are seeing 10 more Ling's being made from Sulky, but he's going to get supply blocks. Oh, that's really going to hurt. But at least he got those lings out right before this died. 
And that, that slows him down here, as you guys can see, 36 out of 36. He's supply block, can't make any more units. And Rogue is making a ton of links himself, actually. He is. Which is going to kind of keep him alive for now. Oh, look at this. He spots the links of Solki over to the side, where they're trying to avoid the Overlords. And now he may, might be able to go and trap them. Looks like Speed is going to finish just in time for Solki, though. Still, we're seeing actually no gas being mined from Rogue while well, this is all happening. So Rogue's going to be very aggressive, but without gas, without Bane Link. Oh! oh! That Bane Link hit was massive! That is going to turn everything around, and Solki can follow up from this with Bane Links, with a lot of Zerglings. He might see blood in the water. He's making more and more Zerglings. I think it's a good choice. This wall needs to be set up ASAP. Three Queens on the wall, an Evo Chamber, and a Roach Warren. It needs to keep this tight as long as possible here. Don't let any of those Zerglings get through. He might be able to survive this enough. We see more Banelings being made, but that block is going to be hard to break, especially with the spine crawler and three queens in the way. Even the defensive Banelings are coming up now to be aggressive. Soki is getting really, really focused on this. A few more links even being made by him. Six Banes in total now being added. This could be a mistake. He could be overcommitting to this. Already a pretty decent block. Yeah. And oh. he breaks through those destructible debris. Nice target on the Baneling here by Rogue, but there's so many Zerlings already spilling through. Oh, I don't know if this is going to be enough at all, and I think we might have seen Sulky commit a little too much to a hopeless situation. That queen will get sniped here, it looks like, but yeah, I mean, he's now at a 12 worker deficit. Let's see how many workers he can actually kill. Doesn't look like very many at all. It's, yeah. He's now 12 workers down, and he's still got links in here, but they're going to be thwarted. They're going to be chased off. We do see him join up now, but after making another swell of uh, juggling, this is not a good situation at all. This is kind of the perfect situation. For Rogue, Rogue going to go for a counter-attack, which is absolutely huge. That's so many Zerglings. We have to wait and see if there's any defensive Banelings back in the natural. I don't think there are, but it looks like Solki is going to take this opportunity to try to run by again. Good block on those Evo Chambers, but a lot of links get through. Needs to use those. There they go. Going to the main base now. A few Roaches are starting to pop out slowly here, but he's got no spines. He's got no Banes. And meanwhile, the same situation happening at home. One defensive Baneling does help save one of those Queens. The Roaches should be able to hold here back at home for Rogue. Oh yeah, these roaches are going to have out so much against what's remaining, and I, I'm actually really nervous for Salty at this point. He might have enough to defend this, but his drones have been pulled from the main base. And here's another issue, Moonblade. He doesn't have any roaches. The roach count for Rogue is already starting to get pretty healthy. That's going to help him take a third base if he wants to play it that way, or just do a timing he and could kill Salty. He could do a timing. He could start upgrading uh, plus one uh, missile attack as well at the same time and get a get ahead with upgrades, have very powerful roaches in the mid-game. Both economies... Kind of took a lot of damage. Uh, I mean, Rogues is in much healthier shape, though. I think he's just going to attack. I think Already he four Banelings here. He's got a ton of links in production right now. And those Roaches are going to be able to target down Solki's Bane so easily. Then he's just going to stream through, targeting whatever he wants with his Roaches, taking out Queens, taking out defensive Banelings. That he's, Roach advantage is so scary right now. He's going to have to have the, the perfect defense of his life because this is going to be the hardest composition to deal with with Lings and Banes alone. No spines. Roach is at the front to tank. He pulls his Banelings back to save him. Not all of them, but at least four of those. Well, Five Banelings streaming in now. Too many Banelings, man. I think this might be it. This could be it indeed. Good mic here by Soki, but it's a numbers game that I do not think he can win. GG. Rogue. 3-0, man. Whoa. I was not expecting that, but Rogue did his homework. He certainly did. He studied Soki's style really well, taking those two early wins with the nine pools. And Soki, would you say he really overcommitted there to that attack? Yeah, I would have to say he did, especially when he saw the reaction from Rogue, how he made that block, how he had extra queens already, and a spine crawler making. He just invested too many insurgents. Maybe he should have uh, changed it up, started droning, started going to muters. Anything else would have been good. Well, this could not be what... TCM was expecting from Solki in his debut match here. The very first match of our new Star League in Korea ends so quickly with a 3-0 ZBZ. And well, poor Solki, man. That is the one thing you give up when you leave a Kessler team. You, you give up a lot of preparation. Because obviously that team had a lot of practice partners, a great coach to help him out and research. And now we have an interview, Wolf. Yes, we do. Of course, we're going to be hearing from Rogue here. So what he has to say. Congratulations. You're the first person to win in this new league. How do you feel?
The first time he actually won in a best of series in a long time, so he's very happy that he was able to take the win today. Taking a lot of best of one wins, of course, in Pro League is what he's referring to. Not so many uh, wins in round of 32, etc., etc. Before I came in today, actually, uh, I decided to do early rush builds in the first two sets and then long games for the rest of the matches, and it worked out really well for me. So even if I win uh, one of those two aggressive builds, then he feels like he's going to win the whole series, so he just decided to do those both times, and uh, he felt confident if he only won just one, he was going to advance. And he feels very confident against Zerg uh, these days in this easy matchup. So now I'm advancing to the group selection. It's my first time going to group selection. So I'm very excited. And he wants to go into a good group that will allow him to become the champion of this season. People are saying the Zerg is not doing very well this season. But since I won today, I'm going to try to prove them wrong. Of course, he beat a Zerg. He knocked a Zerg out himself. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Rogue? <laughs> the horrible thing he did. That would be a great interview question. So, Rogue, you advanced today as a Zerg player, but how does it make you feel that you had to eliminate one of uh, one of the Zerg? only eight Zergs in the tournament? And that's actually quite so possibly the best, most successful one at that. Like, I don't know. So, so funny movement that we're in a, a tournament where we've got only eight Zergs. One of our best Zerg races. Seven actually. now, Wolf. <laughs> and we start things off with a ZBZ. Yeah. Well, it's great that we got to see one at least this season. I, I we'll have to wait and see. if We're gonna see more. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see if we're gonna see any more uh, Zergs doing well. We're going to have a sudden little break here, a little bit quicker than we expected. So we'll be back after a quick seven-minute break. See you then.